This is the book of 2 Ezra 16 and verse 18, and it reads, The beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, what shall I do when these evils shall come? Tensions reaching a boiling point in Cuba. Hundreds of people participated Sunday in a rare public protest amid a worsening economic crisis that has left everyday Cubans without enough food, electricity or medication. Cuban-run TV showing people flooding the streets of the island's second largest city, Santiago de Cuba. Demonstrators seem chanting for electricity and food, as some Cubans have experienced power outages for more than 18 hours a day. I think there are three crises going on at the same time, an, an economic crisis, a social crisis, and now a political crisis. Um, the, the, of course, the most important and the, the most difficult to solve is the economic one. After the protest, Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel taking to social media saying, quote, mediocre politicians and terrorists on social media lined up from South Florida to fire up the streets of Cuba. The U.S. Embassy in Havana urging Cuba's government to respect the human rights of the protesters and address the legitimate needs of the Cuban people. But today, in response to the embassy, Cuban's foreign ministry announcing it had summoned the top U.S. diplomat in Havana, accusing the embassy of interfering in the nation's internal affairs. The U.S. has sanctioned Cuba for more than 60 years, but in recent years, they've been ratcheted up even more. President Biden has stuck with so-called maximum pressure sanctions that were imposed on this island during the Trump administration. Economists say they cost Cuba billions of dollars a year. Now, coupled with a moribund planned economy, they've created a cash crunch. Today, Cubans struggle with increasing shortages in food, medicine, fuel and power. Inflation has risen sharply, making many products unaffordable for Cubans who depend on an average monthly state salary, the equivalent of just $16. Earlier this month, gasoline price hikes also went into effect. In some cases, raising gas prices about 500%. In another rare move, Cuba has asked the UN World Food Program for assistance, requesting powdered milk for young children. All this while the Cuban peso has plummeted. Inflation has really gone crazy over the last couple of years to the point where if your salary is entirely in Cuban pesos, its value has deteriorated about 90 percent compared to the U.S. dollar in just the last two years. Demand has spiked for the U.S. dollar, leaving Cubans with limited options to live out their daily lives. Pueblo no tiene cómo responder si... si... No sabemos, estamos, eh, por eso es que existe, por eso es que existe el mercado negro acerca del dólar, porque no se ha tomado una medida. Drastic measures in the face of uncertainty. The younger Cubans have sort of lost hope in the possibility that it's going to get better anytime soon. And Ed Augustine joins us now from Havana, Cuba. Ed, you're there on the ground. Walk us through what the reality is like in Cuba with these power outages. These power outages have been a reality for millions of Cubans for years now. Um, I'm broadcasting and I'm speaking to you from Havana, um, where there are approximately two million people. That's only about a fifth of the population of Cuba. Four fifths of the Cuban population lives in the provinces. Um, and we're far more insulated in Havana. So sometimes the power goes in my house. You know, I had a, a power cut for about an hour yesterday. Um, it's annoying, but it's, but it's not a game changer. In the provinces, um, millions of people have been living for months um, with power outages that can stretch sometimes 12, sometimes 18 hours. I spoke to a source yesterday who lives in the westerly province of Pinar de Rio in a small village. He said that he had less than two hours of power yesterday. Just imagine um, getting back to your house after a day at work um, with no light and seeing the small amount of food you have for you and your family um, slowly going off in the fridge because there's not even enough power to keep it refrigerated. Mm. It's, a, it's a very tense, difficult situation for people. Mm. And Ed, the United States has responded to the allegations from Havana that they've intervened with international affairs, right? What are they saying? Well, the Cuban allegation in general, when they talk about U.S., what they say, interference or meddling, is that the sanctions are of themselves um, a way of creating misery in Cuba. You know, that by 
by, by reducing the amount of money that the Cuban government has to spend on things like food to feed people and petrol to keep the power on, they are creating the context for these, um, for these uh, um, um, protests and, and, and general popular discontent. The US government uh, rejects that. The State Department today said that the accusation that Cuba, um, sorry, that the, the, that the United States government was behind the protests was, quote, absurd and has roundly uh, rejected the, the allegation. Ed Augustine, thank you. Thanks for what? All right, all praises, honor, and glory be to our God, our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten Son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. The God of heaven and earth and his only begotten son, Yahweh Bahashim Yahbashai, be all the honor, glory, and praise forever and ever Amen. So the water Yahweh Bahashim Yahbashai, Kaya, call Barakim Ka for all your blessings. And the water Yahweh Bahashim Yahbashai, you know, for blessing the elect, for Shalak, you know, um, for, for, for bringing or giving uh, Barakim to the call Bukharium, all the hopeful elect, which are you brothers and sisters that listen and believe. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like-minded elders teaching this word truthfully and in sincerity on the four corners of our earth. Barakim la habayath madabadai, blessed to the house of David, which you brothers labor in day in and day out, giving all diligence, making your calling of election sure, and to the Akiman Akwath who listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached on the four corners of the earth. Unto you, I say shalom, shalom, and peace unto you brothers and you sisters. This is the brother Sagala, back another day all through the spirit. I pray this lesson is edifying exhorting and comforting which is philippians 4 and 7 the peace that surpasses all understanding which is his truth i just wanted to show this because we are indeed in the last days now this is from um this site called surviving the end times and this is going into the eclipse is coming up on the uh, 8th of april which is going to make an x across babylon so and it lists the names of the, of the places you know nearby where that x would be completed on the 8th and those are like biblical names you know uh, for the most part so it shows you that the times that we're in right and then in the middle you see the ark the ark in kentucky the ark and this new spiritual ark that's going to be where the believers are going to be protected by having this truth and returning and repenting that's the times that we're in so this is the book of second ezra the ninth chapter this is the uproars of the people. We'll get a few precepts and close it out. Second Ezra 9 and 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. So we're seeing uproars. We've been seeing earthquakes over the past two, three years, more and more in diverse places, as the scriptures say. But it says also another sign, right? Another token, another symbol of the times we're in is there will be seen uproars. Of the people in the world we see what's going on in haiti with the tribe of levi and now we see what's going on in cuba with the tribe of manassa so there's more and more uproars of the people in the world but more specifically with the israelites because this is the time that's coming it's called the time of jacob's trouble let me just get that real quick let me find my um i'll just get it here because we're in a time of jacob's trouble that's the times that we're in. So you're seeing that the tribes are going to, this is going to happen more and more. These are those birth pains that's coming before the coming of our Lord. This is Jeremiah 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he, the elect, shall be saved out of it. So those whose names are written in the book of life are actually going to be saved, you know, out of the time of Jacob's trouble. Because in the video it said that the uproars are happening in the protests you know, day in and day out, and they're coming more and more because people don't have electricity, food, and medicine, and that the, ga the gas prices were up, you know, four or five hundred percent, and people are living off, you know, uh, a depreciated um, peso, the Cuban peso is depreciated to the point where it's, you know, not, it's depreciated 90 percent, so that shows you that the money is, you know, is, is worthless. And that's going to happen to the dollar as well. So how much more is we seeing now? You know, the uproars of the people, the uproars of you Israelites, right? Which leads me here. This is the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. So we're in the time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel 12 and verse 1. And I'll highlight it real quick. 
Daniel 12 and 1, and it says, And at that time shall Michael, Maya Ka'ala, right, the archangel of war, stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, and there shall be a time of trouble, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, the elect, every one that shall be found written in the book. So those, you know, who, are, who names are written in the book of life is who's going to be delivered, which that's who the men of the Lord are out fishing for. And you believers will be, you know, a part of those that will be of the hopeful elect contingent upon you um, enduring unto the end, right? Those that endure unto the end, the scriptures say, the same shall be saved. So we're in a time really of Jacob's trouble. And it's only going to get worse. It's only going to intensify more and more. So let's touch on that with a few quick precepts. This is 2 Ezra 16, starting at verse 17. It's the prophet Ezra, Ezra or Ezra, 2 Ezra 16 and 17. Woe is me, which means the, uh, death and destruction. Woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? So Ezra, the prophet Ezra or Ezra, he saw the end. He was given visions, right? And he knew he would be here in his time. So the prophet Ezra is back now, right? Prophesying as he did. In the ancient world, 2 Ezra 16 and 18, the beginning of sorrows. We're in a time of great sorrow. Once again, you got the tribe of Manasseh down in Cuba. They don't have electricity, food, medicine, and the gas prices are high. You know, the, the money has been completely depreciated, almost worthless. So this is, the, this is causing the uproars, the beginnings of sorrows. 2 Ezra 16 and 18 again, the beginning of sorrows is the time we're in. We're in a time of great trouble time of great sorrow it says the beginning of famine or excuse me the beginning of sorrows and great mornings the beginning of famine and great death so that's what's coming great death is coming the beginning of wars that we've seen that going on on the four corners of the earth and the powers those that, that's ruling here on earth shall stand in fear the beginning of evils and what shall i do when these evils shall come so the question really becomes once again what, what are you going to do when these great Evils come more and more, and they continue to intensify through the spirit. The believers are going to call on Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, believe and, and repent and, and believe in the name and have faith in the word. Now, the naysayers, the non believers, the two thirds, also known as the rebellious house, the non elect, those is not going to make it on that spiritual arc, right? And that are, that are not a part of that spiritual third temple, where well, they're going to trust it themselves. They're going to do whatever comes into their mind, into their hearts, right? And, and then that's ultimately going to lead to death and destruction, according to the word. Matthew 24, the words of Yahweh Shah, Matthew 24 and verse 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we're in that time where we're getting closer to the end. Now, that's very important. Now, let's continue to read. Verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation, which is what we're seeing, right? That's the BRICS alliance, you know, that's coming against, that's rivaling the uh, the beast system, you know, America, NATO, the European Union, you know, which is a conglomerate at this moment. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And we're seeing all these things happen, right? Verse Eight, Matthew 24 and 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. I read it again, Matthew 24 and 8, all these are the beginning of sorrow. So this is the time of great sorrow, the time of Jacob's trouble that we read about. Now when you get that word, um, and I won't get it here, but the word sorrows, when you go into it, right? You get the word sorrows, it basically goes into a time of trouble and distress which also goes into um, trouble and sorrows. Those words kind of are interchangeable. And you go into trouble in the Hebrew is Tazar. And that's H6869. It goes into straits, distress, trouble, uh, to be vexed. And then it goes into distress, which in distress is extreme anxiety and sorrow or pain, anguish, suffering, affliction, torture. That's what's coming. The Lord said that this is a time of great torture, great trouble, great affliction. But the majority of our people, the Israelites, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American people on the planet today, 
they, they're not taking this uh, seriously. They're not taking heed to the message because it was set up, you know, only for the elect to receive it from the beginning. Right. Those those whose names are written in the book of life. That's who's receiving this. Romans 15 and four for whatsoever things were written aforetime, meaning what's found in this Bible were written, was written thousands of years ago, 2000, you know, plus years. Some in some cases, depending on the books going back 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, roughly. Right. Almost 4000 years ago is what a lot of knowledge is found in this, in, in this Bible. And it's coming to pass now. That's how we know that it's faithful and true. Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So that's how we have understanding now through the Harakah Kodash, through the Holy Spirit. That we through patience, so the believers are going to have patience, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So it's through patience and comfort of the scriptures that we have hope. Our hope is in the words of the Most High, is in the words of Yahweh Bashmi Abishai. Now, let me get another one that comes to mind. This is Ezekiel. Because the, what was going on with the Cuban people, the tribe of Manasseh, predominantly is there in um, down in Cuba, down in Cuba. What's going on with them is that these these curses are, are, are hitting them real heavy. Just like the same thing with, with the tribe of Levi, getting hit real heavy. We saw not long ago, a few years ago, Puerto Rico, that, out, that island was decimated. Same thing. It's going on more and more and more. It's, it's intensifying and it's intensifying on the most high's people because that's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not called the time of Esau or Elam or Ham or any of these other nations' trouble. It's called Jacob's trouble. But it's, it's going to try the world, but that's how the most high is going to separate, you know, the wheat from the tares. That's how he's going to separate, you know, through sifting who the righteous are and who the wicked, who are the sheep and who are the goats. This is uh, Ezekiel 4 and 16. This is going on with the tribe of Manasseh in Cuba, what we saw in the video very heavily right now. Ezekiel 4 and 16, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem and they shall eat bread by weight. Jerusalem is a people before a place. So speaking about amongst the most highest people. And you could, the same thing is going on in, 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 in um, down once again in um, with the tribe of Levi down in Haiti. Same thing is going on. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem and they shall eat bread by weight and with care and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. See, so that, that's the time that we're coming into because people are astonished that this could be going on in the so-called Western Hemisphere. Right? How could this be going on here? That's supposed to happen in you know poor African nations and these poor nations around the world. You know, these people that are in underdeveloped communities and, you know, that are, um, you know, not industrialized. But that's going on here all over the world and here in the Western Hemisphere. Verse 17, that they may want bread and water. So that's what the big protests were about. It was about the lack of electricity and food and medicine, right? The bare necessities. That they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. They're going to consume and be destroyed because of their sins, because they refuse to return to the God of heaven and earth, whose name is Yahweh, and his only begotten son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying, exhorting, and comforting unto the believers, which is Philippians 4 and 7. The peace is surpass of all understanding. I want to give all praises, infinite honor and glory unto my God, our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. All praises, honor, and glory be to our, our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Honors be to the elder apostles of Great Millstone and like-minded elders who teach this word truthfully and in sincerity. Barakim la habayath madabada, blessings to the house of David, which are you brothers laboring day in and day out, giving all diligence to make your calling of election sure. Help us seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord, Hamashayach Yahweh Shai, is at hand and to the Akim Wa'akwath, which are the brothers and sisters that also listen and believe on the glorious gospel being preached throughout the four corners of the earth. Unto you, I say, Shalom. Shalom to the whole full elect. And a Baba Ball, a Baba Ball, a Baba Ball, a Baba Ball, a Baba Ball will call out a